Hello, welcome along to Sports Bet TV with me, Paul Alster. It is always uh, really good to have you along with us. And of course, the excitement is building as we get closer and closer to the Cheltenham Festival, uh, which is going to be starting in uh, just over two weeks' time, two and a half weeks or so. And uh, we are really looking forward to Cheltenham, and I will be offering a free selection each day uh, for Cheltenham on this service. And we'll also have some very special news about our Out in Front service coming up early next week, so you'll be getting a special message about that. If you happen to be finding us for the first time, then please press the subscribe button just below this screen, and that way you'll be able to get all of my free tips um, straight to your uh, inbox, so to speak, and you'll be able to access them uh, as soon as the um, videos are posted. Now, um, last week, I gave you two selections. This week, there is one selection, but last week I gave two. Um, the first of them was Sporting John, and everything went wrong for him before the start. I don't know how many of you noticed, but that he was very keen to be uh, in the front rank and jump off prominent was um, the jockey on Sporting John, but there was a false start. And having been in the perfect position and the, in the start that turned out to be a false start, by the time they reformed the field to go again, he ended up at the back of the group and he was just never really going a yard. So that was a bit of a, a disappointment. But the uh, much more pleasing sight was that of Cloudy Glen who I suggested to you would bowl along first time out this season and love the ground up at Haydock. And he ran an absolute blinder. I'm sure, like me, you were probably getting very excited to from home when he was still there. He'd seen off most of the field. And indeed, going down to the last, there was still a chance he might hang on for the win. In the end, the two mares uh, came by him, but he kept going for a bra very brave um, third place uh, at 28 to 1 each way. A very nice profit uh, on the day uh, with the play slots. Of course, it would have been absolutely marvellous had he managed to hold on for the win. But we got a great run for our money. And that guaranteed that, um, uh, especially with the win the week before, that uh, this uh, particular month of February is going to be a profitable one at sports bet. Now then, um, I'm going to take you on to my one selection for Saturday. And we're recording this bulletin fairly early um, just after 11 o'clock uh, on Friday morning. And the race in question is at Chepstow, where I think there's a very good card. I know there's good racing across Britain and Ireland, and indeed at Out in Front, I'll have four selections for subscribers there uh, on Saturday, and probably a, one or two more for Sunday. But I think Chepstow's you know, a really good card on Saturday, and the 307 race is a three-mile handicap hurdle. And there are 15 runners going to post and they're forecasting the ground as good to soft. Now, only one firm have gone up early to give us a guide to the betting. And that's a uh, good old William Hill. And they're showing five to one the field, which I'm just going to check. Yes, five to one the field. Um, and that um, is joint favourites early doors. This is all subject to quite a lot of change with only the one firm putting up a bit of tissue prices. Um, and they've gone five to one with the nip hand. Um, for Nigel Twist and Davis, a horse who's seeking a hat-trick, um, has been in really good form, and he's gone up £7 for his latest win at Doncaster. And the other 5-1 to one joint favourite is the Tom Lacey-trained Operation Manor. Now he is stepping up to three miles for the first time, and that's having stayed on really well when third at Newcastle over two and a half miles last time out, and that was when he himself was trying to complete a hat-trick bid. Uh, he runs off the same mark and he's got a proper chance. Um, it is a very open affair, as is indicated by the fact that the betting five to one the field. Now, Nigel Twist and Davis not only has the nip hand, he also has one called Top of the Bill. And this one, also in very good farm uh, or form even, um, he's won two of his last three and he's got up five pounds for his latest win. Uh, which was down at Exeter over two miles, seven furlongs. The extra furlong, I don't think, <clears throat> or furlong thereabouts, uh, is not really going to trouble him. Now, this is um, a potential qualifier. The rules used to be that the first six qualified for entry into the potential final, uh, but because without putting too fine a point on it, there were so many horses just running around to try and get in on a good mark, finishing fifth or sixth or so on, uh, they changed the rules this year 
And it's only the first four that qualify, which means there should be no messing about. Um, and I think that's going to be a, a very significant factor in this race once again. Now, David Pipe has a runner called Thanks for Help, who's uh, running for the first time since a breathing operation. And he's also got cheek pieces on the first time. And he ran really well at the end of last season when he was a good third at the Punchestown Festival in April of 2022, over two and a half miles in a rock solid handicap hurdle. And after a pretty long break, he came back uh, on Boxing Day at Weatherby, where he was a rock solid fourth over two miles, five furlongs. He's a horse who I think the new trip will probably see him improve. There are actually loads with chances. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, but one that I did give a lot of consideration to is the Harry Fry train, Dubrovnik Harry. Uh, he was a really good third in a grade three at Sandown in March of last year, over two and a half miles. He pulled up on his most recent start, but I think we can draw a line through that form. It was the Lanzarotti form, and you'll remember the Lanzarotti hurdle. Uh, it was run in something of a, it wasn't so much a mud bath as a glue pot. They were just struggling to get their feet out of the ground. And I think of about 15 or 16 runners, only four finished, which is ridiculous for a two mile, five furlong handicap hurdle. So we're certainly going to excuse Dubrovnik Harry uh, for not really having enjoyed the experience um, um, slogging away in the Lanzarotti hurdle. But there is a horse at quite a big price here who I think um, could go very well. And that is Southfield Harvest. This is my choice for the champion trainer, Paul Nichols, and with young Ben Bromley on board claiming the seven pounds. He's been having a very good season, apart from that one occasion, of course, where he mistook uh, the finishing line at Sandown, something that uh, has happened to a number of good jockeys over the years because there are two finishing posts there. Anyway, hopefully he knows where the finishing post is good and proper at Chepster on Saturday. Now, Southfield Harvest is a lightly raced nine-year-old. He's won three of his 11 races and he's been placed in five of the other six, um, in five uh, of the other um, ra uh, races that he didn't win. And all his best form is on either good to soft or good ground. So he's going to have conditions in his favour as long as there isn't a tropical monsoon appears at Chepstow, which is quite unlikely in late February although you never know these days. Now, he was a very promising handicap herder a couple of seasons ago. Uh, he won over three miles, so the trip is no problem. And he's won on good uh, ground. He was also a very good third in a hot Newbury handicap hurdle over three miles off a mark of 135. Then that decided to try him um, over the larger obstacles, and he went chasing, uh, making a winning debut uh, at Newton Abbott in May of 2021, but then obviously something went wrong, whether it was during the course of that victory or in training afterwards. He was off for a year and a half um, and he's come back to chasing um, with limited success. It has to be said he's pulled up in two of his three chases this term. Um, and to me, he just doesn't seem a natural over fences, even though in between those two pulled ups, he did run well significantly that run was at Chepstow uh, when he was fourth in a three mile handicap chase in December. Now he's coming back to hurdles which I think will be good for his confidence and I think he'll enjoy it. They've also put the blinkers on first time and the handicapper gives him a chance allowing him to run up a mark of 130 coming back over hurdles uh, and with Ben Bromley's claim he's essentially running off a mark of 123 which is a very big bonus because he's great value for that seven pound claim so all in all he's 12 pounds lower than when he was a very fine third in a hot newbury handicap hurdle over this trip the last time he ran over timber now i'm quite sure paul nichols will have him uh, fit enough to run and as long as the fire is still burning and that the experiences over fences haven't soured him i think he could go very well now, Hills on their early prices have clocked up 18 to 1, 1 8, 18 to 1, and that's each way for four places. And that's a guide. It may prove to be generous, it may prove to be a bit stingy. We'll only find out once all the firms decide to price up. But I think that for four places, Southfield Harvest uh, is likely to run a very good race uh, at Chepstow on Saturday at 3.07. So that's my selection. Uh, for this weekend. I remind you there are plenty of uh, good prize selections uh, available at Out in Front, uh, the details of which uh, to um, join in there you can find just below this screen 
And I remind you as well that there'll be a special announcement uh, looking forward to the Cheltenham Festival and to uh, my tipping service uh, at the start of next week. So do look out for that when you get a message that there's a new video posted. So for now, from me, Paul Alster at Sportsbet TV, I wish you a great weekend. Enjoy it. And hopefully before the snow that's forecast uh, comes along uh, early to middle of next week. Let's hope they've got that wrong too. Uh, so that's it for this weekend. Bye-bye for now.